Germany is Matthew Sylvia. He was the software slash hardware support. Travis Morzini, he was the hardware lead. And then to the right of him is Brian Dubnik. He was the software lead. Our advisor is Dr. Paul Gendron. And our sponsors are Corey Bichon and Tyler Turco. So a little introduction to this project. The, pretty much the goal of this project was to add uh, improvements to a TMS 320C6748 LCDK DSP motor. The board comes stock with a codec that samples at 96 kilohertz, and they will be using it to pretty much send and receive signals under water. Um, so they will probably be using uh, transducers with a resonance frequency of 150 kilohertz. So therefore, you would have to sample at at least 300 uh, kilosamples per second. So uh, there's going to be four customer requirements that we have to follow, one of them being that the moment has to sample of, uh, have a sampling rate of at least 500 kilosamples per second. And uh, another one would be that it has to have some form of off-board memory storage for signals received. Also, it has to operate at low power because it's probably going to be battery operated. And lastly, it has to have some type of transceiver communication for capability. So going into the engineered requirements based off it, for the ADC and the AC of the sampling, we have to make sure that the off-board ADC and DAC can support a sampling rate of at least 500 kilosamples per second, and also that the interface with the modem peripherals is correct. Um, as for the memory, um, we have to make sure that we choose a memory form that is supported by the board, and also um, make sure that we set up the correct things, such as the initialization code, and also drivers for that. Um, as for the third one involving the power, for all the off-board components we have, we have to make sure that it's low power relative to the board's power consumption. And for the last one, for the transceiver capabilities, we have to make sure that these modes can talk to each other using transducers that are hooked up to pre amplifiers. So as for the constraints involving memory, there's two different types of memory that are supported by the board. There's NAND and NOR flash, and due to speed and costs, we chose NAND, and there's three different types of NAND. There's universal serial bus, which is USB, specifically 2.0. Um, there's secure digital SD, and then also serial ATA, SATA 1 or 2. As for the peripheral interfacing, when it's involved with the AC and DAC, there's two different types of serial. Interface, there's universal parallel port, which is UPD, and also serial peripheral interface, which is SPI. And as for the programming part of the uh, constraints, we were tasked with using Code Composer Studio, which is a C slash C language program. And since our experience with C slash C, that wouldn't be the issue, but actually learning how to use Code Composer Studio was a uh, process in itself. So, this is the general overview of the system that we're going to be dealing with. Um, as you see, the TMS 320 is is planned to talk to a uh, DAC, which will then send a signal to a transducer. Uh, that signal will propagate over the water and be received by another transducer, which will then be put into a power preamplifier to be converted into a digital signal by ABC, and then received and stored on the receiving mode. <clears throat> as you see here to test, um, we have a couple of different test cases. One to test the memory, one to test the ABC, and one to test the DAC. To test the SD card, we hooked up a host computer to the debug probe to send functions into the modem. The modem wrote a sign table to generate waves that would be stored onto the SD card. A function generator was put uh, was proposed to send a signal into the ADC to send that signal into the modem to store that signal on the SD card and then represent that signal over map. To test DAC, it was planned to send that, that signal from the ADC into the modem and then bring it back into a analog signal and observe that on an associate. So one of the design choices we had to make was choosing what kind of memory we were going to implement and three choices that were already somewhat supported by the board, meaning that they had the peripherals on them, the ports, were USB, SD, or solid state. Um, solid state in general, of course, operates the best, but unfortunately it uses, as you can see, much more power than the other two options, which uh, kind of nullified it as in one of the choices that we can pick. Which left either an SD card or a USB card. Um, USB stick. 
So we ended up choosing an SD card mainly because they have, it uses less power, it can easily hold the requirements for the memory storage capabilities, and it has a generally faster write speed than a USB 2.0 specifically. This is about 2.0 for that. Um, as far as ADC and DAC goes, the requirements was that it would sample, or at least for the ADC, would that it would sample at, at least 500 kilosamples per second, and it has 16 bit resolution, and that it was low power. Um, as you can see, our sampling rate for the ADC was ended up being one mega sample per second, and the reason for this is that we couldn't find an ADC with that just met the requirement of 500 kilosamples per second with the same resolution that we needed. So we had to up one requirement to meet one more. Um, unfortunately, the amount of power that is used on it was very hard to find in the data sheet. I couldn't find it, and as you'll see later, using the SPI protocol to communicate with it ended up being a problem for us, so we couldn't get it operating effectively to measure that later on. Um, as far as cost, go, cost goes, they were both relatively similar, but still something you have to take into account when you're buying peripherals for a company that wants to spend at least five money one thing. technical design, we do have an SD card, which is more specifically the SDHC card, um, which is SD high capacity, which can either be 2 or 32 gigabytes, which means a 16 gigabyte requirement. Uh, the standard is formatted as FAT32, um, which once again can be, uh, can save data up to 16 gigabytes, and is very compatible with most systems you can plug into your Windows PC, which you'll see later in our demonstration and graph the data that you um, one thing that is notable about the SD card is that although there is a port for it on the board, it is not supported by TI, which basically means that there are no drivers for it that you can down, that you can go or work with it off the internet, which ended up taking the bulk of our time. Um, the ADC and DAC, we were trying to use the SPI protocol to interface with them, but Originally, we were using port SPI 0, so it has two ports on the board, SPI 1 and SPI 0. SPI 0 is connected to also the Ethernet port on the board, which, although we did scour the data sheet, did not come across that, but it led for, well, of course, a bunch of problems. You couldn't get a clock out of it, couldn't interface with it. So we ended up having to use SPI 1, which is connected to a 39th and camera port. But uh, luckily, our sponsor was willing to buy a breakout port for that. They averaged around $10. So we were able to get a clock out, but unfortunately it was a little too late in the development to, uh, to try to interface with ADC and DAC. So our engineering requirement is left with a couple of different test cases. As you see here, we have an inspection for the peripherals. Um, we're going to test the peripherals, it's planned to test the peripherals, and it was planned to have a demonstration after the peripherals were tested. To get into more detail about this, um, test case one was to ensure that the peripherals met the customer requirements. Of course, it's just an inspection of the peripherals, seeing if they reach up the sampling rates and the, the resolution that we need and the storage that we need. Um, the second test case was to test the offboard memory storage. If we can have a signal generated and then stored on the SD card properly, then it has. Um, the, DA, the ADC and DAC worked similarly. We had we, it was planned for us to um, send a signal, um, convert it, see if it matches up in Madeline. If it doesn't, it failed. Um, and lastly, was transmitter uh, receiver communication, which we would need the ADC and DAC to be functioning properly, connected properly, in order to see the signals being sent across as expected. So here's a summary of all those tests. Um, obviously test case one, we were able to validate just by a simple inspection of the data sheets. Um, all the hardware that we chose actually fit into the customer requirements, so that was fine. In test case two, we did the test with the SD card, which we'll actually show you guys in a little bit. We have a demonstration for that. We were able to generate a sine wave and a cosine wave, store them to the SD card, and then uh, plug them into MATLAB and then plug it. Uh, test case three and four, as Brian has mentioned, um, the whole SPI zero not working out for us really kind of inhibited us on time, so that really kind of pushed us back. It took a while to figure that out because the TI documentation wasn't exactly the easiest to find. And then obviously as a direct consequence of the ADC and DAC not being able to be implemented, we were not able to um, send those high frequencies to from the send mode to the receive mode. 
this is the plan and schedule. Um, as you can see, the green part is the planned hours and the blue part is the actual hours. For the ADC and the DAC section, it's clear to see that we were in fact behind schedule. We spent a lot more hours on those parts than we uh, planned for in the beginning of the project. Uh, the SD part, we actually did in fact get working on time. We did pump a lot of hours into that though. Um, a lot of research was uh, needed for this project to familiarize ourselves with the journal, like writing drivers and initializing a bunch of peripherals. So in summary, I think the next team that works on this project will have a good um, starting position. We did write up some hardware documentation and software documentation so they could pick up right where we left off. Uh, something we um, were informed by TI on a forum post is that if they are going to use SPI for the ADC, they would probably have to use BitBanging or GPIO because of the signal requirements of the ADC. Um, another good point for them is uh, if they're going to, they should probably implement the SD writing. We do it manually through the UART, but it's probably better for them to implement that in the conversion cycle. So when the ADC is actually um, converting the signal, that's when they should be writing it to the SD card rather than just manually creating signals. Another important thing for them is there's a talk through C6748 project, which uh, our sponsor has given us to play around with. Pretty much that project will take audio, play it from your laptop, and pass it to the modem, pass it through the ADC, through the DAC, and then you can actually hear it on one of the audio ports. So that's very good for them to see the internal service routines and probably put the SD writing somewhere in there. A couple of the lessons that we learned uh, fall into time management and tasking. Um, it's definitely important to assign tasks based on skill set. And for people who have more free time, <coughs> give them the simpler tasks because um, if you try to give them the hardest task, it's not going to end up getting completed and that's going to inhibit you on the final product. Um, another very important thing is to never underestimate tasks. Something as simple sounding as writing to an SD card or hooking up an ADC or a DAC to a board really is not that easy at all. So um, definitely locating more time to tasks such as those is very important. In all, when given tasks that fall out of one's comfort zone, the best thing you can do is just try vigorously and consistently, and I feel that's exactly what the team did. So for our demonstration, we're going to generate a 1 kilohertz cosine wave and a 2 kilohertz cosine wave <coughs> to the, uh, um, the DSP modem through the UR port. We're going to use Putty Serial Terminal to do that. Um, we're going to save those as text files onto the SD card and then transfer the SD card to the laptop, plug those values into MATLAB, and then plot them and just validate that what we generated is in fact what we see. So I hope the uh, pops back up here, but hopefully what you soon be see uh, Matt be putting in, he's opening up Huddy and putting in stuff such as the baud rate, which is uh, 115200, that's probably not the best way to say it out loud, but that's the way I've texted it in probably a thousand times, so that's the way I happen to remember it. Um, stuff like this and little idiosyncrasies, we've, like uh, Mike said, put all the software documentation so the team can, the team next year can go in and run everything that we've done so far without any uh, hindrance. That resolution is not the best, um, but there it is. Another thing is you can see that a serial COM ports, um, one, two, three, and four, they can be, if you restart your laptop, they may be different. And weirdly enough, we're communicating through the UR port, that's what the serial terminal is using, but if you look at the devices that's labeled uh, COM3 UR, that is not the one you want. Um, so even little stuff like that, like we said, we documented all that down so that the next team can run it easily. So it hits enter, the first thing it does is print out sort of a Linux style help section. Um, a lot of the time for our use, but it will definitely come in handy moving forward. Um, you have help, some aliases for help. LS to list the directory. So if you see right now, we have um, one file in there. 
and there's also a directory, which I believe is just the root directory. There's cat, which is, if you're familiar with Linux, is to read the files that you have inside of there. Um, Signgen is another one. You see, like, you just cat, hello.txt, hello students and faculty, just something put in there to prove that we could, in fact, read from the SD card, a text file on the SD card. Um, Signgen is another one that we made, and it asks for a series of inputs depending on what kind of um, signal you want to send. First one will be frequency of the wave. I think at this point we're going to do 1,000. Um, a phase shift between negative 360 and 360, so you can, of course, make it a sine wave, cosine wave, or anything in between. And through the wave, um, very easy to put in, so might as well. So after that's done, Matt's going to use the other command we had that Mike was talking about earlier. So basically, when implementing this into something that would happen in an ISR, an interrupt service routine, it should be borderline the same code. It should be just about the same code, use the same functions. But instead of hard writing in, it should trigger when a flag is set um, by when a flag is set that relays that an SPI communication is coming over. That SPI communication is coming over. Um, for the sake of the demo, Matt's going to do another one, another wave um, that will shortly be transferred to an Excel .csv, which is a comma set comma separated variable. Thomas separated variables, and that way it can be easily graphed in MATLAB so you can see that it's the difference. Another thing is that um, the SD card, SDHD card, also is actually a micro SD card that goes into the board and it sits in a case that is a regular SD card for compatibility. But if you have a micro SD um, port on your laptop, you wouldn't need that. So as you can see there, those, we had an amplitude of 2 with 1,000 and data points start at 2 and go down based on the number of samples. So in the code, there is a set sampling frequency to like um, simulate in ADC kind of. Right now, it's set to about it's set to 300,000. So if you have a frequency of 1,000, you should get um, the division of that for the number of samples we get. So once yeah, you save... Um, currently he's just saving them as common separate variables because that's just the way the MATLAB code works. That's how it reads it in. Zooms it in, you can see one was 1,000 hertz, the other one was 2,000 hertz, which equates to half the wavelength, which is exactly what you see, but in discrete terms here, where it takes double the amount of samples to do the full wavelength. Another thing to notice here is also the distance in between samples, where the higher frequency you have, the more distance there will be in between the discrete points that you get. Um, and the lower frequency you have, of course, it will be doing it more rapidly, so it will be less of a change between the discrete points. But Basically, what we've proven here is that we were, gonna, we were able to create a sine wave that could be sent to the UR port. So, in the final product, this would be on the um, transmitting side where you, can tr you could create a sine wave, send this information out to the DAC through a transducer, see it on the other transducer, ADC, and then save it as we've done here, but with an interrupt service routine based on SPI flags um, to save the schedule to the SD card. And then it could be graphed. Unless anyone else has anything else to say? That's good. I think we'll open it up to questions.